good morning everyone uh, this is me pradeep kadal i am a microsoft uh, most most valuable professional and uh, a manager at uh, unlimited cloud asia uh, you can reach me via uh, my email address pradeep at unlimited cloud dot asia for any future communications and uh, Today, I feel really glad that I'm talking to you about building a business in the cloud. And uh, this uh, is particularly about, this session will be uh, particularly about how you can build, how you can harness the power of cloud to be able to build your business for uh, more profitability. And uh, eventually also create new revenue opportunities for your business. So uh, today, I'll be going through a couple of topics uh, in this presentation where my agenda revolves uh, around uh, the first being the digital opportunity where uh, we'll discuss about key benefits and solutions of using uh, cloud solutions. The next we'll also talk about the advantages of uh, the key advantages of using cloud uh, to run uh, the existing modern businesses then we'll uh, shift our gear a little bit more into the cloud computing platform for example azure and we'll also see how consuming azure uh, will create a differential advantage uh, for business success next we'll also uh, look into the other cloud offerings uh, particularly because i represent the microsoft uh, innovation center in nepal and uh, being a Microsoft MVP, uh, I'd be f uh, I feel more comfortable talking to you about giving you the uh, scenarios, uh, the stories about uh, Microsoft Cloud Platform, where we'll, I'll also go into discuss about Office 65 offerings, Windows as a service, and other cloud solutions. So I'll also do a quick demo of all these solutions, and then we'll conclude. So let's get started. So in this slide, uh, I have some information that I have collected from various sources. Particularly, these are the infographics where uh, it particularly discusses about the digital opportunity that lies ahead. Where, if you look at uh, the slide, where it says 25% of the workers' time is wasted by information overload. So uh, this. This is uh, this. This comes from a survey correspondence uh, respondents, where uh, you know that in the in this whole world the information is increasing and increasing day by day. The data is increasing and increasing day by day, and there are so many unindexed data around the world. And uh, in today's scenario, where so much of data is in place, people get confused. The employees get confused. The workers get confused about what to use, how to use, why to use, and so on and so forth. So uh, generally, there's a lot of data in this, in this uh, digital world. The next survey report says 41% of the employees say mobile business apps are already changing the way they work. This clearly indicates that today, if your business does not have a mobile app, then then it's not a complete business it's not a complete business ecosystem so so i think that the digital opportunity lies in having the mobile apps as a solution as well the next report the interesting report that says two plus trillions of connected things will be in use in 2010 by 2020 so there will be two plus trillion of connected things what does this mean by connected things so from connected things we normally understand anything that connects to internet that could be internet of things so today if you look at the uh, the environment the people the organization around and if you look at this world where we have a couple of or a handful of devices the things that connects to internet directly however in the next three years down the line, 
we would be able to see not just couple of devices not just hundreds of devices not just even thousands of devices but imagine two plus trillions of new devices connecting over the internet so you can just imagine from this this report the amount of the digital opportunity that's that's lying ahead so which would definitely be shaping which would definitely help in shaping the business growth of course and which will definitely be driving the invention of new industries business models products and services so so the digital opportunity is a lot changing in in the next 3 years so before we really dive into what cloud solutions is i would like to go into uh, the slide the slide this uh, the slide about the first industrial revolution that took place in between 1760 to 1840 where you can see this image of a steam engine so this was the time this first revolution was created by this particular engine which enabled people to you know travel faster than uh, they could actually travel with the ride of a horse so if you look at the second industrial revolution that occurred in between 1870 to 1940 then it was actually possible through electricity that lot of changes happened the third industrial revolution that occurred in between 1960s to 2015 about until about 2 years before and this was particularly because of the computers from the age of from from the time 1960s 1970s where we had computers of the size of the whole building and then coming down uh, today up to, until 2015 we had a huge progress he was huge huge enhancement advancement in terms of the computers in terms of the computing uh, technologies where we could actually have computers uh, of a very tiny sizes so now moving forward industrial revolution 4.0 so this is where we are in right now where you could imagine you could actually see that with the with 2016 coming in then with 2017 right now how the world is changing is like the world is now being blurred between physical and digital divide where the fourth industrial revolution is more about it's more about in terms of physical it's more about autonomous vehicles robotics 3d printing new materials in terms of biological it's more about the genetics and diagnosis treatment engineering in terms of digital revolution it's more about iot and this is where is the focus on right now so now why i went through all this this industrial revolution is because because the fourth revolution fourth industrial revolution is all possible because of the term cloud so the cloud is the underlying foundation that is empowering the fourth industrial revolution so what's cloud then so we so let's before we actually move into the cloud solutions i think it's very important to understand uh, the meaning of cloud is very different from the cloud that we see in the sky however there are certain characteristics that resembles very well with that cloud so what's cloud and how can we uh, how can we uh, benefit from the cloud to enable the modern business so let's go through what is cloud 
So it is an approach to computing that's about internet scale and connecting to a variety of devices and endpoints. What does this mean? So this means that cloud is nothing but a platform. It's a platform, it's a pool of infra IT infrastructure resources from where you can resource, you can source IT infrastructure as per your requirements. It's a, it's a pool of computing power. It's a pool of computing power which you can access from the internet. So without internet, you cannot access the computing, the cloud computing platform. So cloud is nothing but it's a platform. It's an another platform where you can where you can uh, do literally anything that you have been doing in the traditional computing platforms. So that's cloud. So technically, if I have to say what cloud is, then it's uh, on a developer perspective, a cloud could be a platform where you can write your codes. If you want to store some files, you could be storing your files in the cloud. If you want to design a network infrastructure, you could be doing that in the cloud by using the cloud resources. So it's a collection of computing services. That's cloud. So there are generally, there are uh, different types of clouds. There are different types of business models for using cloud, but we can discuss about this later. But it's really important, the cloud computing patterns. So let's look at the different cloud computing patterns. So with the slide, where the first the diagram shows the compute increasing computing resource in the in the y axis and the period of uses with respect to time in the x axis so if you look at the first diagram where the cloud computing patterns is more of like on and off where there could be situations in business where you could be using cloud for a certain period of time and suddenly you, uh, you have the requirement where you feel that you don't need cloud for a certain period of time. And then, but you already know that after some time, after that period of time, you again need the computing resource. So, which means with the cloud, now you have the benefit of switching off the cloud resource that you are using for a certain period where the resource is not actually required. So this will actually help you to uh, not to waste the cloud resource when not in use. If you look at the second uh, diagram, then it's more about the the growing fast pattern so many a times we don't know where when a business grow or we might actually know that this business this particular business might grow anytime sooner so if that is the if that is the uh, scenario of a business then with the cloud platform you could be like using the cloud services cloud solutions from the small, small scale and then you can scale it up as per the requirement grows. So which, which means you don't really have the capital in investment in place that you need to make and instead of making the capital investment you could be directly uh, go on uh, operational expenses. So obviously you are making a lot of uh, cost saving in this process. The third diagram, particularly, uh, it shows that there could be uh, uses of cloud solutions for a different cloud computing pattern, 
where uh, we can assume it as unpredictable bursting. So what does that mean? This means that there could be situations in business where you already know that there could be situations where there could be unexpected bursting or unexpected peak hours and uh, suddenly you might have to increase the resources. So with this, uh, uh, with, uh, now instead of having to use the traditional resources platform and then now using the cloud platform, the advantage here is that you can easily uh, plan for the unpredictable bursting situations as well because you have the you have the uh, because cloud pro pro cloud is very flexible in terms of providing the uh, unpredictable bursting uh, requirements similarly on the other other hand we can be using cloud computing platform for predictable bursting scenarios as well where uh, this could be a very common situation where uh, generally uh, the business peak hours could be at 10 a.m. in the morning and then suddenly it might go the business might go slow down um, in the midday and and during the uh, during the before the office hours this could be in, in the late evening uh, you already know that uh, there could be lesser business happening so you already know that there is a predictable trend that's there in the business and even in these situations you can optimize the power of the cloud and you can be more uh, you can you can consolidate your uh, cloud requirements and only pay for what you use so again the big question is why the cloud even though these patterns truly explains why the cloud is, is uh, beneficial over traditional platform. But again, so we can again go through uh, this next very slide to understand how you can be using and why you can be using the cloud platform to enable your business. There are different business models where you could be using uh, cloud. The first being, the first very important being IaaS, meaning infrastructure as a service. The second being PaaS, in short we call it as PaaS, which means platform as a service. And the third being SaaS, in short SaaS, which we can refer to as software as a service. So if you could, if you uh, look at the slide that IAS is particularly a hosting model and PaaS is a is a is a build model where SaaS is a consume model so let's take all these three models one by one where let's look at IAS so IAS so let me first find out if I have the other slide that explains this okay yes I have so infrastructure as a service so infrastructure as a service uh, is a model where where instead of where you could actually be uh, um, using the cloud as your data center where you have access to the whole computing platform the whole virtual machines but then when you are using a virtual machines to run your business applications you need to be careful that you should also be uh, continuously updating your platform while in case of PaaS platform as a service PaaS only provides 
the platform this could be a windows platform this could be a non windows platform but it, pro it provides you a platform where on top of which you're going to start developing your applications or run your business applications however with saas software as a service you would not be able to develop new applications however you will be able to consume the existing applications or uh, if you are a developer company as a developer company you could be uh, quite simply selling your business solutions software solutions to your consumers uh, as a ready made applications so moving on to the next slide where we uh, we can uh, talk more about why the cloud so in short with cloud now you are able to rapidly set up environments to drive business priorities where the speed is is the most important important benefit that drives cloud computing adoption that drives the uses of cloud so if you want to uh, as a when you are into developing an application or when if you want to test an applications then you can immediately set up a, a test bed so that you can immediately start uh, uh, testing your applications many a times you might have to create a virtual instance of a machine and you could be immediately creating a virtual machine and then do whatever is required within the inside the virtual machine the next important thing why the cloud could be the scale the scalability factor so meaning pay only for what you use so you not, you will not have to pay for for uh, for uh, pay for the time where you are not when you are not using the cloud unlike in the traditional platforms where when you are making a capital investment into the it infrastructure whether you use it or not use it the cost will definitely incur you and that will be a burden to your business many a times however in the cloud because of this scalability factor you might not have to you will not have to uh, you, will, you will not have to uh, buy for what you do not use so you only pay for what you use and if your requirement suddenly increases in terms of the computing platform requirements then you can simply scale up the required resource obviously speed and scalability that drives you to saving the cost as well so economics is the third most important factor that drives that can drive you to uh, to cloud uses for your business prof profitability so to explain this even better i have another slide that talks about two business models generally we call these models as first being the hosting models and the second being the business model so before taking out the hosting models talking about the hosting models i think it's better to talk about business model because like we talked in the previous slide saas which is software as a service so software as a service can be a business model for your new business where when you complete developing the business and we are when you are out in the market to sell your solutions then you could be selling the software solutions as software as a service model where you could be using all of your ready made solutions in the cloud and you can simply be selling these solutions to your customers without having to worry about about the networking requirements 
the power requirements, the storage requirements or the server requirements or the operating system requirements and the middleware that helps uh, run the OS properly without having to worry about any of these things you can simply run your cloud you can simply provision your cloud solution to your customers so generally what we what we can refer to this is in this business model your you manage if you, you you can be uh, you become the vendor for your customers so you generally manage everything for your customers so the customer does not have to worry about about managing the the neither the platform nor the infrastructure nor the applications however if you if you if you move into the hosting models where there are three hosting models the first being on premises hosting model where on premises hosting model can refer to a on premise data center where all of these if you look at, if you look at the slide where it says networking whether it's storage or servers or virtualizations or operating systems or middleware runtime data applications all of these services everything will be on premise and because this will be on premise you will be responsible to manage this by yourself however in infrastructure as a service model when you are using the cloud you only you are only responsible to manage operating system through applications and everything in between like data runtime and middleware but you are not you will not be entitled to uh, manage the networks the storage servers and virtualizations so everything will be managed by by the vendor the vendor could be anything like microsoft or google or amazon so so with infrastructure as a service model you will not have to manage anything in between networking and virtualizations and you only care about managing your op your platform your operating systems through your applications moving into the platform as a service you have less burden over managing the platform where you normally do not have to manage the platform as well besides the infrastructure include that includes virtualization servers storage and network so you only manage your applications and your data but your vendor manages everything in between runtime through networking so that's platform as a service so these are the different uh, hosting models within cloud and because of these various uh, flexibilities over using cloud so that definitely you can you can uh, opt for using cloud to enable your business well my next slide talks about the top 5 cloud advantages again the uh, the first being p only for what we use so rather than keeping your own physical servers on premise the first important benefit of using the cloud is again you can simply go for the cloud and only pay for what you use not for the not for the the cost of the the data center but for what you use the second important advantage could be the horizontal scaling so what does that mean that means that you can easily 
add new resources on demand so your business requirement increases and immediately you can increase your you can scale up uh, the cloud uh, resources as well the third important uh, benefit could be quick provisioning like we discussed in the past you can immediately set up the test beds the test environments for you to test business your your business applications before taking it live so if you instead of going into cloud if you are you if you have to if you do this on prem then definitely it will incur more cost and more time for you however with this new cloud platform you can do everything you can provision your requirements immediately the next very important feature of uh, having to use uh, a cloud is also the abundance of file storage so storing larger files you could be using the cloud platform and comparatively if you look at the 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 if you do some cost comparison then uh, cloud offers a very competitive pricing for storage so that definitely means that you can create some rep replicate you can uh, create uh, replica storage and then uh, uh, so that your uh, data remains safe the fifth important benefit could be hybrid cloud flexibility so this means that your data your applications not necessarily have to sit only on one cloud platform or not necessarily that your whole infrastructure should come to the cloud so you could have a hybrid model you could have a hybrid environment where some of your important very private confidential data uh, that could exist that would come down on prem while many other applications could go to the cloud so meaning that that you could have a hybrid cloud platform so with this i think we are ready enough to uh, also talk about what azure is so yes so by now yes azure is something that uh, that is a cloud computing platform so azure is a cloud computing platform again so uh, how do you use this um, i also have a video clip Hi everyone, I'm Tat Young Ko from the Windows Azure marketing team. Today I'm going to talk about Windows Azure and its benefits and show you how you can use it. Let's take a look. Today I'm going to talk about Windows Azure, Microsoft's cloud computing platform, and explain why it's a great platform for developing your apps. So first, let's look at why cloud. To understand this, we need to look at the design principles of cloud computing. At a very fundamental level, this entire concept is one of sharing resources. If we could share effectively, we could stop the waste of resources. All those computers running workloads or applications that are on all the time cost a lot of money, and it require highly paid staff to manage them. And most of the time, they're only using 20 to 30% of the compute capacity that's dedicated to them. So drilling into this, we see that one of the most important points is economics. As this chart indicates, the larger the data center, the cheaper the underlying total cost of ownership is. This is primarily because if you walk through a local power company and say you need to buy a billion gigaflops of power, you get a cheaper price. So same thing with data centers. You get a better deal if you're running at scale. And not only that, but when you run at this scale, you have to automate almost everything. And this automation makes the total cost of ownership cheaper. You can only afford to do this if you're very large. This is a considerable investment. Which brings us to Microsoft. Microsoft offers real-world experience with massive-scale deployments that are unmatched. We've built apps and services such as Outlook.com, Bing, 
Xbox Live, and Office 365 on cloud technology. As an example of the kind of reach we're talking about, Office 365 is now used by more than 20% of all enterprise organizations worldwide. There are over 5 billion Bing queries monthly and over 40 million Xbox Live users. So all of this technology has been used to build Windows Azure. So essentially, Windows Azure is a broad stack of services that runs in our data centers globally. Think of the different services as building blocks. These services can be categorized into three classes. Infrastructure services, which are lower level building blocks. Data services that provide storage and data management capabilities to apps. And app services, which provide different capabilities to rapidly develop apps, scale, and run apps at a global scale. In a physical sense, Windows Azure is built on data centers across the world. Let's now take a look at the global scale that Windows Azure operates in. We have data centers in eight global regions across the different continents, four in the US, two in Europe, two in Asia. We also recently announced Windows Azure availability in China. These are gigantic in their scale and operations. Each data center is about seven to 10 times the size of a football field, and their power utilization efficiency is about twice that of a large enterprise data center. We also have global support with local teams around the world so you can be sure that you're taken care of if you run into any issues. Windows Azure provides several benefits, and so now let's drill into some of these. The first is time to market. Instead of waiting days or even weeks for IT to procure and provision servers, you can easily provision resources immediately. You can develop and deploy within minutes. Reducing the time to market means that you can get your app out there in the market to your users as quickly as possible. The speed and agility that this gives you also means you can reiterate quickly to improve on your apps. Open and flexible. We realize that you'll want to run a variety of workloads in the cloud. With Windows Azure, we of course provide first and best experience and support for Microsoft workloads. But at the same time, we've embraced other open technologies. In enterprises, Java and .NET are still mostly used, but developers are also using PHP, Python, and other languages in addition. Windows Azure supports all of these languages and more. We provide out-of-the-box experience for open frameworks like Hadoop, web frameworks like WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. We also provide first-party SDKs for developing apps using Android, iOS, or Windows phones. In addition to the breadth of the platform, it's important to note that using Windows Azure is not an all-or-nothing proposition. You can use most services independently of each other. For example, you could use storage without compute. And what you want to use and how you want to really use it is really up to you. And finally, economics. With the cloud, you're only paying for what you use. This means that you have great cost savings and can achieve great efficiencies. You're saving money for any app that has variable computing needs. For some of you, this also means that you can free up capital from infrastructure investments and put it to other use. So these are the benefits of using Windows Azure. Let's take a look at how you could use it. One way to use Windows Azure is to extend your infrastructure. Windows Azure Infrastructure Services allows you to spin up and tear down virtual machines as needed. There is no hardware provisioning necessary, and you can scale efficiently for your needs. We understand many of you already have line of business apps that are on-premises. You can take advantage of Windows Azure by extending those apps into the cloud. With Windows Azure, you can scale out your app to multiple instances to handle unpredictable usage. You can also connect with on-premises Active Directory or integrate using Windows Azure virtual networks. By extending your infrastructure, you get the best of both worlds by leveraging existing assets and new capabilities in the cloud. Another way to utilize virtual machines is for dev and test. Anyone that creates custom applications needs a dev and test environment. Developers need specific tools installed, while the test environment must replicate the world in which the new application will be deployed. Given the cost and time required to provision physical servers, it's become common to use virtual machines to do this. And with Windows Azure, you can basically log into the Windows Azure management portal and create virtual machines using Windows Azure infrastructure services, and you can supply your own VM images or use VHDs provided by Windows Azure. And remember, we support both Windows Server and Linux. Once these virtual machines exist, 
developers can use them to build and test a new application, customizing the VMs as they see fit. And why would you want to do this? Low cost and speed. Windows Azure VMs are available to users in a few minutes versus deploying them in your own data center, which can take days or weeks. Also, an organization would typically pay for VMs by the hour. With the cloud and Windows Azure, you're only paying for what you use. So again, you're getting great cost efficiencies. And lastly, you get a gallery of images to readily choose from, like Windows Server, SQL Server, and various Linux distributions. All of this makes Windows Azure a great platform for doing dev and test. You can also build websites with Windows Azure websites. This is a platform as a service solution, and it's great if you want to quickly build and deploy new sites, do dev and test, or migrate an existing site that's already in production. Windows Azure Websites has support for great features like custom domains, SSL, auto-scaling, and provides an SLA on single standard instances. You can create new applications from scratch or deploy existing ones built in ASP.NET, PHP, Python, or Node.js. It's that flexible. It's also very scalable, making it easy for you to scale up your site to larger instances or scale out to multiple ones. And finally, it's secure with enterprise-grade availability with support for SSL and Active Directory authentication, making it possible to build applications for business workloads. Next is mobile. With Windows Azure mobile services, you can easily and quickly build cross-platform mobile apps that scale. Mobile services provides a turnkey solution for storing data in the cloud, authenticating users, sending push notifications, and adding server-side business logic. By allowing you to leverage the full suite of Windows Azure services, including Active Directory, Service Bus, and websites, as well as Microsoft's global network of data centers, mobile services is perfect for both consumer-facing apps that respond to variable demand and employee-facing apps that require high availability and enterprise-grade security. And finally, we have Windows Azure Meta Services. This is a platform-level service that enables developers to build solutions for ingesting, processing, managing, and delivering media content. This is built on top of the infrastructure of Windows Azure and IaaS Media Services. You have access to both Microsoft and third-party technologies that are curated, ready to use, and integrated into a single platform, simplifying the creation of end-to-end -end media solutions. Windows Azure has had great momentum. We have more than half of Fortune 500 companies using Windows Azure, and we're doubling compute and storage capacity every six months. To put it into perspective, in the two minutes it takes to brew yourself a cup of coffee, Windows Azure Active Directory has already processed over 1 million authentications from many devices and users around the world. These are some of the customers that have used Windows Azure and have had great success with it. And part of the reason why they've invested in our platform is that they trust us. Windows Azure represents our massive investment in the cloud and takes advantage of all experience in the industry. Today, we run some of the largest global services securely and efficiently, such as Bing or Office 365. And we run over 200 global services 24-7 with these stats to show you how large scale and global our operations are. You can rest assured that security and operational efficiency is at our core. The other concern that you might have is resiliency. With Windows Azure, everything is designed to fail because resources are plentiful. This means that we can take a different approach when building applications. We all know that any part of your app can fail, but if your web server tier fails, we want to make sure that your application can keep on working. How you do this is by having multiple instances of your web tier. Any of these copies can fail, but Windows Azure can make sure that it detects and recovers from these failures by spinning up a new instance. The platform also makes sure that your application instances are separated across redundant parts of the underlying physical infrastructure. In Windows Azure, we call these fault domains. Using Windows Azure Storage as an example, if you give a file to Windows Azure, it saves that file three times in three different fault domains. If any copies of the file fail, the platform creates another copy. With this, we make sure that your data is always safe when you store it in Windows Azure. So in summary, I hope you enjoyed learning about Windows Azure and the different ways you can use it for developing your apps. Today, we looked at the benefits of Windows Azure, such as time to market, being able to deploy and develop your apps quickly, being open and flexible, having support for many languages, tools, and frameworks, and economics.
being able to achieve great cost efficiencies by using Windows Azure. We looked at the different ways you could use Windows Azure, such as uh, extending your infrastructure, dev and test, building websites, mobile apps, or media solutions. You can learn more and get started by signing up for a free trial at windowsazure.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. You can sign up for a free trial of Windows Azure at windowsazure.com and start taking advantage of the cloud today. So with this, uh, I want to talk more about the Azure footprints where uh, this, uh, this uh, map talks about all the 38 plus reasons that Microsoft has set up its Azure data centers across the world. And so far it has, uh, so, so far we have 38 plus uh, reasons worldwide in terms of the data centers and regional partners. So that offers data center uh, facilities. And in terms of number, it's very interesting to note because more than 70% of the Fortune 500 companies are using this platform and there are more than 40 trillion storage objects there are there are more than 4 million requests made per seconds there are 450k plus active websites that are being hosted on azure so far there are 400 million plus azure active directory users so basically azure ad that's aad is the authentication um, cloud-based authentication um, feature that Azure provides. So similarly, there are more than 60 billion authentications per week happening through Azure. So there's a lot of big numbers. Uh, that's already associated to Microsoft Azure platform. So, uh, with this, I would like to go for a quick demo of the Azure platform. So, how do I get started? The process is very simple. You simply have to visit portal.azure.com to get started. So shall we go ahead? So first, uh, let's go to portal.azure.com portal.azure.com So this is the this link will take you to the to the uh, welcome screen for Microsoft Azure but definitely would for this you would need a subscription so uh, I have a subscription that I would like to use right now for the test purpose. So I am being redirected to Microsoft account phase where I will need to log in with my Microsoft account. Speed. So I am now logged in into my Microsoft Azure. So very quickly I would like to show you how you can create a new virtual machine. So for this, in the left pan you see a lot of uh, functionalities, tools, resources, services that you can see and out of them. So this whole screen is your dashboard. You can create multiple dashboards for your uh, better manageability of your cloud uh, platform and resources. 
so you can see that I have a free trial which is a subscription right now and uh, uh, very similarly you can also get uh, Microsoft Azure as a response uh, you can, so very similarly you can get Microsoft Azure uh, account for your business uh, now let's get it started so I click the new button in the left corner of the screen or instead of actually doing this I can simply close this down and uh, select virtual machines so when I'm clicking the virtual machines I can see that I have two virtual machines already running in this particular subscription and they are placed within uh, resource groups as, as you can see let me add a new virtual machine so my objective is to add a new virtual machine or demo machine so add and what, can, what do I want to install inside the virtual machines it, it fairly depends on what I plan to do with the virtual machine so uh, for the test purpose let me add a Microsoft server a Windows server in this virtual machine so I'm selecting Windows server and when I'm selecting Windows server it shows a lot of other options different versions different editions of Windows servers and uh, for just a random, uh, just a random. At random, I'm selecting a Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition of Windows Server, and nothing but. But I just click Create. But before creating Create, I get to choose between Resource Manager and Classic as a deployment model. However, this doesn't really matter at the moment because. Um, deployment model will uh, act, this is actually the clouds uh, this cloud platforms uh, computing architecture so uh, without even worrying about what I am selecting where uh, resource manager being the latest deployment model I am going ahead to create the virtual machine so clicking create to create the virtual machine So now, so I need to uh, figure out the basic settings of this virtual machines and I need to give it a name. So I could say DTFP could be the name of the VM. Uh, now I could uh, be selecting the VM disk type. I have two options here between solid state drive and hard disk drive. I can choose any of these where quite obviously SSD would be uh, a expensive option for me so I can choose SDD now I also need to choose a password for this the username for this so the username could be my name password would be any it would be any password that meets the complexity so now uh, I need to select the subscription I have a subscription called a free trial so I'm using this and uh, now the next option is to select whether I want to create a new resource group or I want to be using this existing resource group so I would prefer to create a new resource group because this is a demo uh, VM so I would say it as VM demo and 
the next option is the location where I get to select which location I want to place my VM, VM in. So the nearest for me could be Southeast Asia from Nepal. However, depending on where my business will be located, I could be choosing the location of the VM. So if my target customers are in the US, then definitely I can choose between North uh, US or South or the Central. So there's another option where I can uh, select uh, whether yes or no that I have a Windows Server license because I'm placing a Windows Server operating system within this VM. So I get to choose whether I bring my own license or use the license from Microsoft within the VM. So obviously if I'm using my own license, uh, then I need to say yes. If I'm not, then I need to say no. So since I do not have a license at the moment, so I can say no and I would be billed accordingly. So I'm pressing OK. So this, this is the time when I need to select uh, the size of the virtual machines. I have numerous sizes available here. So currently these star marks uh, says that these are some of the recommended sizes that song and you can see that the the cost of each of this VM is mentioned in, in Great Britain pound per month that's 84.29 pound per month this is an estimation similarly if I have to choose D1 standard VM then uh, then it will be uh, 89.28 Great Britain pound per month and if I have to use uh, uh, A1 standard VM then it's a uh, little cheaper however I can go for any I, I can also view other VMs that's the that VM sizes that's available so for the ease I'm choosing D1 V2 standard VM with 1 core and 3.5 GB uh, of memory I'm selecting this select so more settings with some optional features in this pan where uh, I do not necessarily have to uh, uh, configure all these settings because automatically uh, Azure will uh, uh, will provision network settings default network settings for Azure for this VM so I can simply select OK to complete the settings it's now running the final validation and it says that this VM will incur me 0.1133 grid burden pound per hour or I could be choosing uh, other VM sizes depending on my requirements and say um, so with this I go ahead and purchase this VM now you can see a pop-up notification that says the deployment is in progress where I can actually see this deployment progress by now again visiting the virtual machines pan uh, where I will very soon get to see the new VM that we just provisioned we can also view the status by going through the notification This should take less than a minute to uh, complete the process and finally we'll get the VM ready for use. So now you can see that uh, the DTFP test VM that we just uh, provisioned is now uh, is being created. You can see the status in the screen itself. So I'm hoping that very soon the, the uh, once the VM is created, the standard user would turn from creating to running.
So now you can see that uh, the uh, VM's status has now turned to running state. So the next step to access this VM could be by simply clicking this VM name ddft-vn. So when I'm clicking this, I'm getting to view all the overview of this VM. But most importantly, I need to uh, be careful that uh, this VM has popset public IP address as 52.187.4.121 with the VM size being standard D1v2 with one core and 3.5 GB memory with operating system as Windows with computer name as ddfp-vm so now how do I access this VM is simply go to this connect option and click there when I'm clicking there immediately a dot rdp which is the remote desktop protocol file will get downloaded and simply I need to open this file so when I'm opening this file the remote desktop connections will pop out where simply I connect this and uh, now this will prompt me to provide the credentials to log in into the VM so this is a place where uh, I need to place the username Pradeep was the username while the password being and then ok so with this uh, do you want to connect despite these certificate errors let's not worry about the certificate errors at the moment and simply place ok to be able to connect to the VM that we just created so you can see in the screen that a new user profile is being created for Pradeep as the user within the VM so that the, the desktop uh, personalization is happening at the back end and within seconds the VM will be, will be ready to use and devices on this network? Yes. So here you go. With this, the VM is ready to use. Now, it's totally up to you on how you are going to use this VM. Whether you want to host your business applications here, host a website, or, or host any other uh, applications of your, uh, of your interest. So this is it with this demo and uh, let's move on to a different demo. So let's get started with the second demo in, uh, in Azure. The second demo could be about app services. So app services is, is a set of services that helps us to create applications, websites and host it into uh, the Azure platform. So let's get started with app services. I'm clicking app services. Then simply click on the add button. So when I'm clicking the add button, uh, I get to see the options web plus mobile in the screen and it's totally I would like to post or what application what web application I would create. So host of applications, there's a host of uh, content management systems, services, web services that I can choose from. So I think the best could be creating a 
Wave app. So, Wave app, this uh, from Microsoft obviously means uh, ASP.NET web application. So, however, uh, if I choose WordPress, I can I have the option to create a WordPress uh, website and also host this app in Microsoft Azure as well. So I'm clicking WordPress. So when I'm when I'm clicking WordPress, so uh, it it uh, shows me a WordPress app and an option to create the app. So now is the time to give a name to this app. You can see that this app gets a dot azure websites dot net as subdomain uh, by default. So Azure Websites .net, Azure Websites is the free subdomain that Microsoft provides. However, uh, depending on your requirement, depending on the name of your business, you can uh, convert this uh, your app dot Azure Websites .net domain name into your custom domain name as well. So uh, I could name this app as DDFP dot azure websites dot name and it's available this name is available so i can use it i can i select the free trial i can uh, use an existing uh, resource group which i just created in the past i could say vm dash demo so database providers could be uh, anything between azure database for mysql MySQL in in app or clear DV. So I could be using a MySQL in app with the default app service plans. Uh, I can simply click create and create the WordPress site. So now the deployment is in, in progress and uh, with this the WordPress application is ready to go. So once the deployment completes, so I, I should be able to browse to the uh, WordPress application that I just created as ddfp.azure websites dot net so the deployment is now done so uh, when I'm clicking azure ddfp dot azure websites dot net in the browser and click enter then i'm going uh, forward with the the wordpress installations which means that the wordpress is now uh, wordpress application is now being hosted on azure so this completes the demo so i hope that this was uh, beneficial to you um, to be able to uh, understand Azure platform better and to be able to use this uh, platform to be more productive in terms of business growth. Thank you.